Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can assign spring properties to your model's extended bones, a new feature in iClone 5.4. If you look closely at these three dancing foxes, you can see that the one to the right has a spring tail, the one in the middle has a spring setting applied to both ears and tail, while the far left doesn't have any at all. Okay, here's our character in 3D Exchange 5.4, and we're going to convert it to a non-standard character first to map the extended bones. The first thing I want to do for the tail is to select the root tailbone section, and then select Map to Extended Bone. You'll see all the tailbones turn purple once the root node is selected. Next item of business is to do the same thing with the ears. Simply select the bones, then map them as extended bones. Once this is done, we'll want to click Convert, then go into the Spring Settings to adjust the spring properties of our extended bones. To do that, we'll go to the top and click on Edit Spring. From here, you'll see that when I click on the Show Spring Nodes Only, nothing will appear, so we need to set those. I'll select both my ears right now and activate the Spring property by clicking Active Spring. You'll see them turn blue now, and what I want to do is select the Rotation Spring Type and increase the Spring Hardness a little to avoid making them too floppy. Now what I'm going to do is select the final three nodes in the tail and follow the same procedure. We don't want the entire tail to be a spring, otherwise it would look too floppy and there would be some material issues as well. Finally, we can select Apply to iClone and check out the results. Let's apply the rock and roll dancing motion to see our spring bones in action. Okay, so let's look into how we can turn the spring values on and off now. In 3D Exchange, you can see there are three separate spring groups from what we defined earlier. In iClone, each one of those spring groups has a separate track in the spring section of the timeline. This actually allows us to turn the spring values on and off, which I'll show you in a moment. When your character is selected and you're in the avatar section, you can go to the spring section to select each spring group individually and turn it on or off. Let's apply an animation to the fox to see this in action. I'll just apply the rock and roll motion once again and loop it so we can see the effect for a bit longer. What I'm going to do is toggle the spring effects on and off so you can see the difference, along with the gradual transition from one state to the other. So let's go close to frame 200, and from there I'm going to deactivate the spring value of both ears. I can choose the second ear from the drop down menu and follow the same procedure. Now when I play back, you'll see the ears gradually transition. Let's try the same thing with the tail now. I'll turn off the spring value on that a little further down the timeline, and play back to test out how it works. You'll see the tail stiffen up after the transition. Now I'm going to try turning the spring value back on and see what happens. The effect is not surprising, the tail will return to its spring value and start waving around again. Let's see if we can extend the transition period and move it slightly. You'll see that the transition back to spring tail is a bit more gradual now. If we want further control over that, we can also manipulate the extended bones within the Motion Layer Editor. We now have the option to show the bones here, so let's toggle that on right now. There is also an area for bone settings where you can change the size of the bones to make them easier to pick. Now right in that area between the two transitions, I'm going to use the timeline to add a keyframe and start my Motion Layer Edit. Now, if I want to bend the tail, I can use a unique selection method by control clicking the root node I want for the edit, and then clicking the next one that I wish to apply an edit to, which will show up yellow. When I move that one, it will create another keyframe in the timeline, and the tail will bend nicely. I'll just copy this keyframe from the first motion layer edit, and paste it later on to return the tail to its original position. I can also edit the extent of the tail bending as well while I'm on the middle keyframe. Now you can see when I scrub through the timeline that the tail will have a nice bend and return to its normal shape. You can fool around with the transition curves and all that stuff as well to get the results you want.